Carbon dioxide, an old friend and enemy. Excessive amounts of it pollutes our air and in some places forces us to pull out gas masks. It can also increase our temperature enough to melt glaciers and raise sea levels. But without it, our temperature would go as low as negative 18 degrees Celsius, which would result in us freezing the popsicles. But we don't really need to worry about that because we have more than enough carbon dioxide in our air. And when I say more than enough, I mean more than enough. In capital, bold, and italicized letters. If we produced 38.2 billion tons of CO2 in 2011 and 39.8 billion tons in 2013. All of this has resulted in the reality of global warming. You've probably heard of that term on the news. Glaciers are melting, polar bears are dying, and it may not seem like a big deal, but it is. In the last few centuries, our average temperature has gone up by 1 degree Celsius. Scientists have predicted that in the next 100 years, our temperature will have gone up by 3 degrees Celsius, and some have even predicted that by the time 300 years have passed from now, Earth will be inhabitable. Before the 1800s, carbon dioxide in our atmosphere had a ratio of about 375 parts per million, or ppm, the 375 being the carbon dioxide. Now it's at 400 parts per million, and that's a heck of a lot of parts per million if you ask me. But plants have a special way of absorbing all this carbon dioxide, and it's called photosynthesis. Now there's a whole bunch of scientific weirdness that happens during photosynthesis, but I'll give you a simple rundown. The plants take solar energy from the sun, and using that energy, they absorb CO2 from the air and combine it with the water they get from the soil to make glucose their food and oxygen which they release into the air. And plants like trees can store the CO2 in their trunks for as long as 100 years. However, photosynthesis only happens during the day, which leaves entire nights for CO2 to get into the atmosphere. And there's also the fact that we've produced too much carbon dioxide for the plants to absorb it all. So at this point, you may be thinking that our world is doomed and that there's nothing that can save us and that we'll have to move to Mars. And yeah, that could be a possibility, but there's still hope. A light at the end of the tunnel. Over time, we have invented carbon dioxide absorbing devices. An example would be a scrubber device which can remove some pollutants, including carbon dioxide from the air. But if you think about it more, these machines need energy, and energy most of the time means burning fossil fuels, which puts us back right where we started. But before we lose complete hope, I would like to show you another light, and that light's name is Klaus Lackner. Klaus Lackner is a scientist at Columbia University, and he and his team have developed a new carbon dioxide absorbing technology in the form of leaves. Except that's not actually what they look like. They look a little bit more like this. They are said to work 1,000 times better than real leaves and have been calculated to absorb 1 ton of carbon dioxide a day. And unlike actual photosynthesis, these leaves don't need sunlight to absorb CO2. So that means you can put them closer together and overlap them. The leaves are made of a thin plastic covered in a layer of sodium carbonate. Once the leaf manages to take the carbon dioxide from the air, it stores it inside itself. And after that, the carbon dioxide is washed out by being put in a small, moist environment. That way the leaves absorb the moisture from the air and push out the carbon dioxide. It all seems pretty amazing, doesn't it? Finally, we have a solution. But hang on, don't get too excited. As expected of an amazing invention like this, it's going to be pretty expensive. Each tree will cost $20,000 to produce, and if we were to plant 100,000 of these around the world, absorbing 3.6 billion tons of carbon dioxide, the cost would be $2 billion. But that's only the production cost. There's also the distribution cost and the cost of washing them. Then there's also the issue of where we should store all this carbon. We wouldn't have enough space to store them in oil wells or anything like that. And yes, you could store them in stone and rock formations, but there's a lot of risks that come with that. The first risk is that the carbon dioxide might not react well with some of the other ground minerals. And, for example, natural disasters like earthquakes, volcanic eruptions, and even erosion can leave cracks and openings in the stone and rock, causing the carbon dioxide to be exposed to the atmosphere in large amounts. And there could be a small possibility that our groundwater will be affected. And even if we were to produce 100,000 of these trees, we humans would still produce too much CO2 for the trees to absorb it all as quickly as we need them to. So is it all worth it? Some would say yes, that even if we are paying more than $2 billion on artificial photosynthesis, it'll pay off in the future. And yeah, that's probably true. But if we really want to get rid of global warming once and for all, we need to do that by decreasing deforestation, protecting natural lands such as mangroves and forests, and we also need to start more beneficial lifestyles. We need to try and conserve energy, to stop driving our cars to places we could easily walk or bike to. And we also need to discourage the excessive burning of fossil fuels. We need to put an end to something that we started, and we need to do it now. And if that doesn't happen, well, we're just going to have to pack our bags because we're moving to Mars.